It's been a long time coming, but it's time for another operating session on the Willow Creek Railroad. In this video, we're going to switch things up, literally. This video focuses on the role of the Yardmaster at the Riverport town of Bucky's Crossing. Bucky's Crossing has a lot of different things happening. We have the railroad car ferry operation on the west end of town, a three-track ferry yard adjacent to the downtown commercial district, a passenger station, and three rail served industries on the east end of town in the area known as East Portal. Since you're new to the Yardmaster's position, let me give you an orientation. First, it's important that you know the tracks. There's a two-track car ferry that runs between Bucky's Crossing and Concord, another Riverport town. In the industrial area, we have three industries, Whiting Oil, Fenster's Wholesale Produce, and Blue Star Freight. Next to the fascia, we have the three-track yard servicing car ferry operations. Track number one is furthest from the fascia, then track number two and track number three. The passenger station is located on the north side of town, along with arrival departure tracks. The outer station track is located on the far side of the station, then the inner station track, and finally the ferry access track. As Yardmaster, it's important that you understand where Bucky's Crossing is located, from an operational perspective. The layout runs as a point-to-point -point operation, with Waverly located at the westernmost point, and the Spokane Staging Yard located at the easternmost point. In between is Bucky's Crossing. So when you're working in Bucky's Crossing, west is to your left and east is to your right. Signs in Bucky's Crossing will help you with these directions. Since the east and west tracks coming to Bucky's Crossing are all single track, all inbound trains must stop at the yard limits and contact you for permission to enter the town. Trains from Waverly will stop at Willow Creek Junction, and trains from Spokane will stop at Glacier Valley. Finally, there are block signals at each end of Bucky's Crossing. A red aspect tells you that a train is occupying that block, which is important for you to know whenever you are sending trains into or out of Bucky's Crossing. Now let's talk about the fascia. This is your control panel for operations in Bucky's Crossing. All turnouts are operated by tortoise switch machines, which you control using the toggle switches on the fascia panels. You also have toggle switches to control the permission signals at Willow Creek Junction and Glacier Valley. On the fascia, you'll find car card boxes for every track and industry in Bucky's Crossing. Okay, enough orientation. It's time to operate. Let's see what's happening during this operating session. The timetable shows you scheduled trains, and the arrival departure guide shows you all trains that will be run. We'll come back to that shortly. Let's quickly check the car cards. You have an arriving ferry with one car for Bucky's Crossing. The other five cars will be sent to Waverly Yard. There's an engine card that gives you DCC information for the switcher assigned to you. In the yard, track number one has a set of freight cars due out on the next ferry. And track number three has been pre-staged with tank cars for train number 21. Finally, we find cars to be picked up at Fenster's Produce and Whiting Oil. Blue Star Freight has two cars, but one is still being loaded or unloaded, so we won't pick it up. The Arrival Departure Guide is your program for this operating session. You see that at the start of the session, train number 19 will arrive from Spokane and terminate in your yard. You will make up train number 21 with cars headed for Waverly Yard but you also see that through freight train number 23, a scheduled train, is due in around 1243. Looks like it's going to get busy. On the wall by Bucky's Crossing, you see the fast clock, which is running on a four to one ratio. It's now about 1205 and the operating session has begun. 
While you've been planning your moves in Bucky's Crossing, the dispatcher has cleared train number 19 to leave Spokane. When number 19 reaches Glacier Valley, he stops and calls you for permission to enter Bucky's Crossing. You tell the engineer to proceed on signal. This means that when you give him the green permission signal, he should proceed to enter Bucky's Crossing. You've routed number 19 to the interstation track. Bucky's Crossing does not have any facilities to store road engines or cabooses, so an engine and caboose terminating in Bucky's Crossing will typically be reassigned to an outbound train. You check the car cards for train number 19 and see that one car is for Blue Star Freight in Bucky's Crossing and the other five cars will go out on the car ferry. You've come up with a switching plan, so you move your switch engine to behind train number 19 and pull all cars. Since the orange reefer will be going to Blue Star Freight here in Bucky's Crossing, you set it aside temporarily and move the remaining cars to track number two so you can send them out on a ferry later in the session. The tank cars for train number 21 are on yard track 3, so you move the caboose and switch engine to pick up those cars. There are a number of different ways to break down and make up trains in Bucky's Crossing and for repositioning cabooses. I'll show you several different ways during this video. You couple the cars for train number 21 onto the rear of the road engine sitting on the interstation track. Since you've already coupled the caboose onto the rear of the tank cars, train number 21 has been built and is ready for departure. You contact the dispatcher to clear number 21, but he informs you that scheduled freight number 23 is due in shortly. He instructs you to hold number 21 until train 23 has departed. Lucky for the crew of train number 21, while they wait for clearance to depart Bucky's Crossing, they can take advantage of one of the delicious eating places located in town, or maybe even the hot dog stand. Since you're waiting for train number 23 to arrive, you decide to head back to the yard to do a bit of organizing. You originally set the orange reefer on track number 1, while you pulled the tank cars off track number 3. Now that number 3 is empty, you decide to use it to store cars destined for local industries until you get a chance to switch them later.
You also take this opportunity to file the car cards. The card for the orange reefer is placed in the track number 3 box and the cards for the ferry are placed in the track number 2 box. You also use one of the box labels to indicate that cars on track number 3 are off spot. That is, they need to be eventually switched to local industries. It's very important that the yard master maintain good organization of his car cards. You check the fast clock and see that you still have a little time before number 23 arrives. You decide to head to the ferry to unload the incoming cars. Car floats in Bucky's Crossing do not allow engines to run onto them. So you use an idler car to reach cars on the car float. It's very important that you maintain balance of the car float at all times during the unloading process. This means that the number of cars on each ferry track cannot differ by more than one car. You carefully unload the ferry to maintain this balance. It's a bit of a laborious project, but adds to the operational fun of Bucky's Crossing. You move the unloaded cars to the ferry yard. The yard is really full so you decide to set the cars temporarily on track number 3 until you can free up another track. Train number 23 has finally arrived at Glacier Valley and has called you for permission to enter Bucky's Crossing. You give him permission and route number 23 onto the outer station track. Per the schedule, train number 23 doesn't depart until 12.58, so you have time to reload the ferry. Again, you make certain that the two ferry tracks are never off-balanced by more than one car.
The ferry is finally loaded and trains number 21 and 23 are waiting to depart. Definitely busy in Bucky's Crossing. At last, it's time for number 23 to depart. Through freight train number 23 leaves Bucky's Crossing, headed to Waverly. The dispatcher has already cleared train number 21 to follow number 23, but 21 must still wait for a clear block. Finally, the block signal changes to green and number 21 also departs Bucky's Crossing. With things finally cleared out of Bucky's Crossing, you head back to the yard to clean up the mess that you left. You move the cars that you temporarily left on track number three, leaving the orange reefer that needs to be set out later at Fenster's Produce. You move the cars to empty track number one. These cars will go to Waverly on a later train. Remember though that the Great Northern Boxcar also needs to stay in Bucky's Crossing since it will be set out at Blue Star Freight. So you end your organizing efforts by moving that boxcar back to the off spot location on track number three. Finally, you organize your car cards. The cards for the cars that you moved onto the ferry are placed in the ferry box. The car that you moved to the off-spot location is placed in the track number three box. And the remaining cards are placed in the track number one box. And the label rotated to show that the cars are going to Waverly. It's been a busy time in Bucky's Crossing, but we're far from finished. The fun continues in part two of this video as we focus on the role of the Yardmaster at Bucky's Crossing.